لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العليم العظيم عوض بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله كما هو أحل والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين مولانا عبد القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد we continue with our series on the rights that are incumbent upon us towards others and those that are incumbent upon others towards us. And today we start on a new chapter within the same uh, reciprocal rights of the fourth holy Imam. And here the Imam is addressing the rights of leaders. Now many a times because we live in a society where everybody cannot be the leader. If everybody is leading, then who is following? If everybody is choosing the path, then we will not have or acquire common goals. So we find in a society, especially a social society like ours, and indeed if you look in the animal kingdom as well, if you have a pride of lions, all the lions do not make the decisions. You will find one as the head of that pride and that head decides in what direction the whole group goes. Same applies to if you see the migration of the wildebeest uh, in East Africa. And you find that every herd of wildebeest have a group that are taken as leaders. Whichever direction they go in, it may not be the best direction. It may not be the easiest direction. But there is a trust element in the leadership that whatever path they have taken is the safest path. It is probably a bit difficult to cross over or follow, but that is the path that is going to lead them to better and greener pastures. So it is a social aspect of life on earth as we know it, and in that social aspect, as much as each individual ultimately is answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen some people over others to lead. So the first right is the right of the possessor of authority. Possessor of authority begins at home. One person leads the whole house. As much as the son may grow old enough to say that now I am earning and I am running the expenses of the household, if there is a fatherly figure or a grandfatherly figure, the whole family turns to that person to decide on a lot of major aspects of how the household will be run. If every man in the house, the grandfather, the father, the son, and the son's son, probably the grandson, if every one of them was to have a difference of opinion, for example, what meal should be cooked, where you should go for your holidays, you might find that the family will fragment some will choose one direction, the others will go the other direction, and that unity within the environment, within the family is broken. Same applies to our society, in our jamaats, in our communities, and then on a greater scale within our city limits, you've got somebody who runs the city, you've got governors and what have you, and then you've got at the country level, and then of course at the international level as an umbrella. In addition to this, of course, in the Shia world, we have been blessed truly by a spiritual leader who controls the whole of the Shia world. And it's an immense responsibility that's put on this person's shoulders. So what is the right of the person who possesses this authority? The fourth holy Imam says that you should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established you, the follower, as a trial on the one who possesses the authority. Many a times we think that the person in authority is a trial over us. What kind of a leader have we chosen? Or what kind of a leader have we found? But in actual fact it's the other way around. We are a trial on the leader. The leader is taking on a huge responsibility. Take for example a business establishment. The owner or the manager of that particular business has to look after the or safeguard the safety 
of whatever is within that business the tools of the trade the premises all the equipment and what have you and besides that that person has to be aware every minute of the working life day and night possibly because even after everything is closed down there is still a premises and goods and whatever you have within the premises that has to be taken care of does the security company call the sweeper in the middle of the night and say we've heard the alarm go off no if god forbid the lock of the door breaks is it the sweeper who is now perturbed as to how he's going to get that or how she is going to get that repaired or is it the is it the responsibility of the person who's been entrusted with the safekeeping and the safeguarding of the premises the manager or the owner of course it, the onyx is on the owner or the manager not only that but for every staff that is within the premises there is a huge responsibility every minute of their working life and sometimes even beyond their working life if in their personal lives they have problems or issues is this person in authority who has got to account for the well-being of that person who has to take care that, that person is enabled as fast as possible to be relieved of their problems so they can resume work if they're not at work how they're going to fill in the blanks and the gaps if the person is at work and is in a high risk area to be aware that this person is in that high risk area and god forbid should an incident take place how that person is going to be taken care of so much responsibility on this person's shoulders and ultimately the imam says this person is answerable to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing this person through the authority that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon this person over us so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy is not only giving this person charge but this becomes a, a subject for test for the person who is in authority so what is the right of this person who is in authority allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or rather the imam says so therefore you should provide this person with sincere advice what happens many a times especially in our communal setups when we find that we are we are encumbered with a leader that we're not happy with in our opinion the leader is not doing their best we think we could do better if we could do better why were we not chosen as the leaders why did we not stand up to be counted so we've already established somebody as a leader and now because in our opinion certain things are not being done the way we would want them to be done maybe in our opinion certain groups are being favored more than us and because of that we start challenging that leadership if that leadership turns to us for some sincere advice or guidance we try to ruin that leadership by giving false advice or the wrong advice or misleading them the imam says no it is incumbent upon you to provide sincere advice to your leader and you should not quarrel with the leader whilst the leader has full dominance over you don't we see it in our communities we've seen it very recently and it's a shame that we go into petty petty issues and sometimes spread malice or malicious rumors about the leadership and instead of giving them full respect we do the opposite of what the imam has prescribed for us now especially in a religious society like ours where our guides the imams have told us do not quarrel with the leadership and yet that is where you find the biggest of quarrels and fights that take place and then the imam goes on to say that by quarreling you're not only harming the leader see now this is a key factor we as a mass think that if we quarrel with this leader we are going to dissuade them make them smaller in the community weaken them stop them from doing certain projects or doing certain acts or taking care of certain segments of the society because we are not happy with it what the imam says is when you do this when you quarrel with the leadership you not only try to destroy them but you are in actual fact destroying yourselves 
How many times do we see this, that we weaken the leadership so much that the leadership is then unable to provide the services that we expect from them for even our own basic needs. We take them away from their goals, we weaken them financially, physically, through material help that we could have given them, and because of that the whole mass suffers. At a critical, critical point in time, you find that that leader is not able to deliver a very important service that otherwise would have been very easy had we all worked together. In the end, the Imam says, you should be humble to this person and be courteous for that person's gifts. So whatever effort this person is putting into the leadership role, we should be humble, we should accept that this is the best that this person can do for us. And then Imam says, you should seek God's help in this regard. Always keep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your perspective. Whenever you're dealing with the person in authority and in leadership, do not oppose that power and do not resist your leader. And should you do so, you would have disobeyed him and disobeyed yourself. We're doing more harm when we oppose the leadership than we're doing good. And then the Imam goes on to say, you are thus going to expose yourself to encounter his evil, expose his destruction, and the destruction of all those who fall under his authority. Sometimes, in our opinion about the leader, we not only destroy the credibility of the leader, but we destroy the credibility of the entire community. We do not see the greater picture. Whoever is in the position of leadership, be it at work, be it at home, be it at the communal level, be it at the society level, be it at the county level, be it at the government level. Internationally, when we start slagging off the president of our country, we are not only undermining the presidency, but we are portraying a very poor picture of the people who elected the president. If we start undermining the leader of our community, within the social setup in which we exist, we not only weaken the position of that leader within the community, but we weaken the leader within that social setup as well. When we show a united front, no matter where we are, no matter what the situation, the world will take us seriously. When we show the division within ourselves, then we are giving rise to a chance for shaitan to divide us, for the others to become more powerful over us and overcome us, and then we wonder why we are not a prospering community, society or country. Let us look at our leadership and realize that we have a role to play in making sure that it's a successful leadership. وَآخِرُ الدَّوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ سُورَ مُبَارَكَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ